In this video we're going to look at colour. We're going to see how colour fits in with light, what makes different colours, as well as mixing colours through both colour subtraction and colour addition. We've previously talked about light as being part of the electromagnetic spectrum. In particular, it's the point between around 390 to 700 nanometers. What we perceive as white light, so the light that comes from the sun, is a mixture of all these different wavelengths. So there'll be some electromagnetic radiation at around 400 nanometers, some at around 700, some at 5 and 600. So all these mixes together to form what we see as white light. If we were to take just a small portion of that at a particular wavelength, we would perceive that as being a particular colour. And we have the colour spectrum, which is what you might know as the colours of the rainbow. And it goes from the long wavelength, or low frequency, in red, and it moves down through orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, to violet, which is the shortest wavelength or the highest frequency. These different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation travel at slightly, very, very slightly different speeds through mediums of different optical density. So when you get something like a glass prism, what you're able to do is harness this fact that they travel slightly differently and split the white light into the spectrum so that you can see the different colours of light or the rainbow. The first person to do this was Newton. This had been done previously and people actually knew that shining light or white light on some glass could change the colour of the glass. But what they actually thought was that the white light was becoming impure from the impurities in the glass. When light hits an object, it can either be reflected, absorbed or transmitted. And different wavelengths can be reflected, absorbed or transmitted to different amounts. So what that means is that some wavelengths might be absorbed while others transmitted. This is where colour starts to come in. So if we have white light reflecting off an object that we perceive as white, what's happening is the wavelengths of all the different colours are reflecting off that object. So we get all the different wavelengths come out the other side and we perceive that as being white. If we had a surface that absorbed all wavelengths except for, for example, red and reflected red only, we would perceive that object as being red because only the red light would be the one reflected, which is the one that we see. So we would perceive it as being red. And if no light is reflected, so none of the wavelengths are reflected, all are absorbed, we would perceive that object as being black. This is where colour subtraction comes in. Coloured filters uh, and paints and things like that work in a similar way. So what happens is the pigment in these, for example, filters absorbs some wavelengths while transmitting others. So for example, a cyan filter will absorb red and it will transmit green and blue and be perceived as being cyan. Well, a magenta will absorb green and transmit the red and the blue, and a yellow filter will absorb the blue and transmit the red and green. So we call this colour subtraction because we're taking away from the wavelengths of light that are actually there. Colour subtraction is how mixing colours of paint works. So the cyan filter that we talked about before that blocks red light if we mixed the cyan filter with a magenta filter that blocks the green light and put them both over each other, the cyan would block out the red, the magenta would block out the green, and we'd been left with blue. So this is how 
by taking away or subtracting different wavelengths, we are left with a particular colour. The opposite of this is used when we're mixing lights together and it's called colour addition. So when we have two lights and we're, uh, we're of different colours and we add them together, what we end up with is the two different wavelengths of light or more wavelengths than we started with and they add together in a different way. So for example if you have green light and red light and you shine them both on the same area we will see yellow light and yellow is a mixture of green and red. Similarly if you were to mix blue and red light you'd get magenta and if you mix all three colours, green, red and blue, you'll end up with white light. In this video, we've looked at light and what light is. We've looked at how colour is light of a particular frequency or a set of particular frequencies. We've talked about colour subtraction, so taking some of the frequencies of light away to change the colour and colour addition, adding extra frequencies of light, which again changes our perception of the colour.